looking to action plans to prevent young people in Maple and Clarendon um, getting involved in crime. Asha, good evening. Good evening, and thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Well, tell us what your plans are and what you've been doing. Well, before that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the organization for which I work and the project for which I work. I, I work for FHI 360, and we are implementing what's called local partner development. And it's funded by USAID through its Caribbean Basin Security Initiative. And the CBSI, the Caribbean Business Security Initiative, has a lot of arms, but we are focusing here in Jamaica through LPD, local partner development, on youth crime and violence prevention. And I'm going to start by giving you some statistics. Okay. So a colleague quoted to me recently, six out of every seven persons arrested for murder in Jamaica is under the age of 34. So think about that, six out of every seven. And one out of every two persons who is murdered is under 34. So you can see we have a clear issue with youth crime and violence here in Jamaica. And what local part development is doing is that we are trying to work with civil society organizations, so that's your community development committees, your NGOs, and we're actually trying to help them to increase their capacity to actually deliver direct services related to crime and violence. So if you think about it, a lot of our persons who work in crime and violence know are often individuals are small organizations right. and sometimes they do some amazing things with the little resources that they have now. So you have people who will take in children who are at risk or boys who are at risk of falling into crime into their houses just to avoid them getting drawn into gangs. Uh, so we look at CSOs from the very small one and two persons to large organizations which everybody in Jamaica will be familiar with. And what we are saying is that imagine if you can do what you're doing now with your limited resources, but we can help you to do better as a very good ecosystem through their... Um, what is the stakeholders that would include? That means everybody from the political representation to the mm -hmm. business persons to the CSO, the church, everyone. Clarendon has a crime prevention committee, Clarendon has a parish development committee, so we've brought all of those persons to the table. And we basically empowered them as a group of steering committee members and they developed a program through which we would recruit additional persons who are working in Clarendon on crime and violence. That's so ranging from the big to the small. Right. And we brought them all together in what we call a whole system in a room workshop. And what we did was to bring everybody who was identified as having a role to play in fighting crime and violence directly. So the police was there, the church was there, schools, deans of disciplines, UTEC, UA, National Integrity Action, a whole range of stakeholders. So we brought 80 persons to a room and we went through a process where we looked at where Clarendon was coming from, what sort of the historical context and where we would like them to be. And then we gave them a visioning exercise. Okay, if you had your choice of working together, how would you do it? And so by doing that, what we have said to them is, you can do your own little thing. But if you're trying to fight crime holistically, then if you put your pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle, then the result will be something substantial. So coming out of that, we had them work on five action plans. And we, LPD, will actually fund those action plans up to 5.2 million, that's the maximum, for delivery over the next 12 months. So again, it was driven not by our policy directives, not by our ministry's policy directive, but really what the stakeholders felt that so, they had to contribute. So what you're looking at is the organizations and the individuals, the interested individuals within the community, and looking at the problem that they have, and then having them facilitated by your organization um, come up with strategy or a strategy or strategies that they can solve that crime problem, reduce crime over whatever period they set their own goals, etc. And, and focus on the things that they believe are the most important things. Right. And then you, fac you facilitate that by the expertise and, and plus some money as well. Right. And the most important thing about that whole strategy is that it's how they do it together. So it's not how individually each of them are going yeah. to deliver a piece. It's how they come together as forming a, call it a single organism yes. and deliver together. So we actually had them form these working groups. They identified a single focal point organization yeah. who would be responsible for the administration and then they actually are looking at how together they can solve all the problems. How has this been received? Very well. Um, we are quite proud of how it went in Clarendon. I mean, the stakeholders bought into it. There was no ego, there was no issue of geographical territories fighting against each other. It was, how can we look to put together a program which will solve 
the issues of crime and violence directly because that's what we're really focusing on on this intervention how can we get direct impact on to what we do uh, one of the interesting ones we had for instance was actually the parenting group and of course everybody in jamaica talks about parenting oh we need parenting yes but when you look at it there was a whole lot of parenting initiatives which are occurring and what that group did was to say hey what are the gaps that need to be filled so for instance even if we have somebody who is going through a, a skills training program to upgrade their skills so they can take better care of their family or they're learning parenting skills who takes care of their child while they are going to this That's course. What you mean. So there are obstacles to sometimes achieving what they want to do and persons don't think about those obstacles. Exactly. You think about the end result that you want. No? Correct. Right. So we are asking to look at the entire system and say, okay, there are obstacles in there. How can we as an individual organizations or individuals actually contribute to getting everything correct using a system approach? How do you measure these things though? And that's one of the uh, challenges that all of these initiatives or many of these initiatives have is that they're not monitored. Um, enough or driv data driven enough. All right, so that's an excellent question because you're correct. And one of the things that we are trying to bring in our program is that exact concept of measuring. So when we speak about targeting, we need to help the organizations identify who are the real target organizations. We have an issue in Jamaica where oftentimes programs which are developed for youth end up helping what I call the professional youth. Right. Those are the youth who have always been youth club members. They're giving the system. Those are giving the system. They're, they're giving the system. Just that they're best equipped okay. to get it. That's what you're saying. So, one of the things we do is that we set up indicators from start. We start a mapping process where we actually see who the individual organizations tell us are other organizations that they partner with. And we do what's called a social network analysis. Mm -hmm. So we see how often does this organization occur in partnership. And then we do what we call a baseline, so we measure what that partnership level is now. And then throughout the project, we actually do intermediate. Every six months, we intend to do a measurement of how has the partnership increased. At the same time, we have it's hard to do a collective measurement in, right. in terms of some of the data we have is missing to start with. Right. But what we have done is set up indicators such as how many youth have been impacted by this collective, um, collective action program. And so what we're doing is, and also, how has the situation in the direct youth that we are targeting improved? So we don't expect that we will start these five initiatives and then crime and crime, crime and crime and the sports. But we expect that if we have, let's use a rate of reintegration in schools. If we have a school with a 6% of the students don't come to school, transfer rate, and we're targeting those 6%, then we'd expect some change in right. that 6% or other things being equal. Marshall, that's a very interesting and a very interesting approach and I, I look forward to see how it plays out itself in Canada and then of course into St. Catherine. Thanks for joining us on CBM Live. Thank you very much for having me. Well, from a very interesting and important discussion, we move um, into our social media section with Judy Bodley.